although you would hardly know it when you walked into the grand hotel-style lobby at 360 East 72nd Street. This 456-unit cooperative was a series of disasters waiting to happen. The building's roof needed repair. The elevators were failing. The air conditioning system needed a new chiller, and the oil tank required an upgrade. While all of these things were manageable by the hands-on nine-member board, the most daunting problem was the brickwork. The building had a white glazed brick facade. The brick is constructed in cavity wall and supported by shelf angles at every floor level. And there was a history at this building of doing significant repairs on a five or six year cycle. Every, every local law cycle they were looking at significant repairs, maybe upwards of a million dollars on every five year cycle. And most of this damage was a result of typical damage that you have with white glazed brick, which is spalling of the brick faces from water being trapped behind the face, and then differential movement at the shelf angles. When the building was built, there were no soft joints or very little soft joints beneath the shelf angles and so on. It was obvious that to, in order to do a meaningful repair on the existing facade, it would require extensive work. So when they looked at the economics, it made sense to go ahead and reface the building and put a new facade using a non-glazed brick, which has a better track record as far as uh, longevity. For the next three years, and for the whopping sum of $8.5 million, every single white brick was replaced with a red one. It was, as one board member put it, millions of dollars for millions of bricks. If you can get through the snow, I can give you a pretty good view of... Now all of these parapets were, were completely reconstructed. All the parapet walls here. Here's a great view. You can see the magnitude of the work. The building is basically at the bottom. It's almost like a big H shape with this tower coming up through the middle. So all of this masonry is completely reconstructed. You can kind of get an idea of the scale of the work. The board designed a five-year plan and stuck to it, which allowed the co-op to carefully budget its money and its work. It managed to replace the bricks over three years while doing the other required work as well. First of all, we have a five-year capital budget that we go by. Uh, the engineer uh, prepares uh, a systems report which the board, that's the Bible, of what systems are going to possibly fail, need work, need replacement. The board did all this work without raising maintenance or passing a special assessment. The board refinanced the cooperative's underlying mortgage and gained $12 million for the building. Uh, we have, uh, in essence, uh, rebuilt most of the uh, infrastructure of this building uh, over the last five years. Uh, with the exception of our boilers, which fortunately have a much longer useful life. Although the brick replacement was a monumental task, it went without a hitch. And the lessons this story has for other people? Now, in, in many buildings, people get elected to the board because it gives them a certain amount of power uh, without a, a particular plan. Uh, I think in this building, uh, it's become our culture uh, that we have a plan. Uh, and the people, when they become members of the board, uh, are to implement a plan for the benefit of everybody, not for themselves individually or a small group of people. Uh, and it has worked quite well for us. And I, and